two of our major projects, they deal with blast mitigation. So one of the projects is funded by Office of Naval Research. So there we are looking at ship structures and see how these structures will respond to uh, a loading that is from explosives. It's important for us to understand the physical mechanisms of damage that occur in these materials when they are subjected to rapid loadings. Nobody knows how these materials will perform under drastic loadings. Is it delamination? Is it breakage of fiber? Is it breakage of the core material that we are using? So all those, those things feed into designing a, a material that will withstand such dynamic loads. So there's a difference between doing experiments and testing. Testing you do of routine things. But when you do experiments, that means you don't know the physics behind it. So we do experiments here, we don't do tests. From the education point of view of, of graduate students, I think the lab has been very, very successful. Dr. Shukla is a great mentor. He's extremely knowledgeable and he's extremely well known in his field. He's concerned about helping you learn, helping you do the best that you possibly can. He's not one of those professors who goes out there trying to make you um, make it so difficult for you not to learn. He actually makes it simpler and he's, his work ethic is unbelievable and he really has a way with people. But the students find it very interesting and I never stop these students from trying out. As long as they are safe, you know, safety is of course very important, but as long as it is safe, they can try out ideas and I know sometimes I think that this idea is not going to work but I don't want to stop the students and many times I've been wrong, you know. Research by definition means creativity, you know. There is, if you are not creative, uh, you, you cannot survive in today's uh, uh, research field just by doing routine work. We are trying to learn new things in every experiment we do. We are trying to see if there is something new in here that we can learn and that we can use. We do experiments in the lab. We don't do tests. In most of the work that we do, we don't know beforehand what the outcome will be. Firing! Firing! Half the world is interested in destroying things. The other half is interested in preventing things from being destroyed. We are doing an experiment from explosives or blast or you know underwater implosions or crashes. So you're trying to fi figure out why things explode and try to prevent them in the future? Yes. Why things explode, how much energy is released when they explode, if there's a neighboring structure, will that structure be strong enough to sustain this kind of an implosion? Our interest primarily is to, is to see if we can prevent from uh, things getting damaged or destroyed. And all these events that we're talking about, they happen in uh, microseconds. So you're talking about millionth of a second. There is need to know how structures respond under such severe conditions, more so now than, than it was before. For example, if there's a ballistic event, somebody shoots at a soldier and the soldier is wearing a vest, how will that vest react from the Homeland Security point of view if there is an explosion? Pipelines is, is another example. Submarines. Another example, we are doing some work for the Air Force right now that uh, deals with hypersonic flights. Suppose you have a Humvee and it goes over a buried mine. So those experiments are very complex, but we do conduct them. For, for simulating blast events, either you use a lot of explosives. Now using explosives is dangerous, as we know. We simulate the explosion part by using an equipment called shock tube. So the shock tube, as the name suggests, it's a long tube. And the way we have built it, it's a modular design. So we have sections, three feet sections that we have attached through these flanges. So this pressure that is released from here is going to propagate in this direction. And by the time it reaches about this point here, it develops into a shock. And then the shock propagates all the way to the muzzle end and comes out at that end to impact the structure. And it travels very fast, you know, this whole pressure travels in these experiments with speeds of the order of three to five times the speed of sound. Wow. The structure that we are testing 
is positioned at here. So in this case, we have a composite plate that we are trying to study. It's a carbon composite. And this carbon composite we are studying, testing for Navy applications. So these materials have been subjected to, to underwater seawater for some time. The whole idea here is to see whether we can make targets that are strong enough. And each of these shock pulses that comes out is representative of a certain amount of explosive. Okay, so let's destroy it, yeah? Sure, let's try it. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're about to try this experiment. Uh, I'm gonna turn on, turn the knob and we're gonna blow up this carbon fiber, hopefully. Turn the helium tank all the way up. Make sure that there's pressure in the line. Safety first. Firing! <laughs> We successfully cut it in half. The post-mortem of the specimen tells us how this thing really fractured. Right. Whether this is a composite material, so did the fibers fracture, matrix fracture, how much is the extent of the fracture in the material. So we do that by taking photographs of the picture after the experiment is over. So you can see the extent of damage here. Yeah, because it the snapped in half, but it also separated like... It separated and there's a, there's a lot of fracture here, there's fracture here. So all this has to be taken into account in understanding the, the results here. Right, right. Do you think about the fact that the experiments you do here every day are life and death matters out in the field? Uh, that's what we, I mean, our interest, of course, you know, we are, we are engineers and scientists, so we are always we are interested in understanding the physics of the problem, why things happen, and how can we improve them. But deep down, you know, that is the intent that we can protect our soldiers and, uh, protect people from uh, events that are, that are catastrophic. That certainly is, 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 is a big driving force and an incentive not only for me, but for my students. Do you get upset when you can't destroy it? <laughs> Actually, I love it. You know, For our kind of applications, if we can create materials and structures that can withstand and are not destroyed, then, then that, that is actually a success for us. You know, Although the research is somewhat driven by these uh, catastrophic events, but there, there are a lot of positive things that come out from this research also. So our emphasis is more, is more on learning those positive things. So if you're designing new structures, new materials, then uh, they will benefit everyone. You would find exclusive access to a unique laboratory where explosions are an everyday experience. The goal is uncovering materials that can save lives. Physicists and engineers at the University of Rhode Island conduct these experiments for various entities, including the military. They tell us their work has direct ties to fighting the war on terror. And what they discover can potentially protect soldiers, police, and the rest of us. Walt Buteau is here with a story you'll see only on Eyewitness News. The dynamic photomechanics lab is close to one of a kind, and inside they're conducting potentially life-saving research right in your backyard. The powerful blasts. Do not involve explosives. Even though this University of Rhode Island shock tube looks like the gun barrel of a tank, it's powered by highly pressurized jets of gas, the gas chambers are... that travel at two to three times the speed of sound. Professor Arun Shukla has run the dynamic photomechanics lab since 1981. The pressure just jumps up and then it decays slowly. But this is a better, safer way, way of doing experiments rather than using explosives. Various types of modern day composite materials are ratcheted to a bracket at the end of the tube and then hit with helium compressed it up to 2,000 pounds per square inch. A human lung collapses at 60 pounds per square inch of pressure. And while we see fire, shrapnel, and other debris rocket from roadside bombs and other explosions, those catastrophic incidents also create destructive pressure, similar to what the shock tube does. The lab allows researchers to see what different levels of explosions will do to various types of materials. There are half a dozen places in the world that do these kinds of experiments. Here's what sets this lab apart from others. Our camera records a blast at 30 frames per second. The cameras here can record at up to 2 million frames per second. 
We found out that super slow motion video is what is helping researchers develop life-saving material. That part of the story, tonight at 6. Walt Buteau, Eyewitness News. Tonight, exclusive access to a local laboratory that's close to one of a kind. Explosive experiments are an everyday occurrence in your eyes' shock lab, but we found out super slow motion video like this is the key to potentially life-saving discoveries. The research in Kingston is all part of fighting the war on terror. Eyewitness News reporter Walt Buteau with a story you'll see only on Eyewitness News. Your cell phone records video at 30 frames per second. In the shock lab, the cameras work at 2 million frames per second. This piece of composite was hit with a blast that lasted a fraction of a second. Not but the super slow motion video will allow researchers time to uncover what happened. Maybe it's the professor who's run the dynamic photomechanics lab since 1981 says the dots on the composites offer clues. It will tell them in real time where the damage started, why did it start, strains and stresses. He tells us terrorism drives a lot of the motivation behind the entities that pay for these experiments. Helium pressurized at up to three times the speed of sound creates the destruction instead of explosives. But the goal is to discover how much various types of composites can take. This is exactly the same piece of material that was subjected to a slightly lower shock than this, and it, this was able to withstand. Underwater experiments are conducted in this pressure tank. Materials can be prematurely aged and then put in what simulates up to a half mile depth of water pressure. Again, the super slow mo will show what these tubes, similar to what might be used in a submarine or a pipeline, can and cannot take. But whether it's a tube or an explosive blast, the goal is the same protect people during real life incidents. We are trying to create structures and materials that can withstand catastrophic explosions. Professor Shukla tells us the work in his lab changed drastically right after 9-11. Walt Buteau, Eyewitness News.